Hi, and welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss, your host. Today I have a guest. Her name is Michelle Letterly. And um, just to give you a little insight as to what Stories of Hope is, we talk about grief, recovery, um, hope, faith, forgiveness, inspiration, transformation, and celebration of life in its entirety. And we can all have, if not all of those, one of them that will stand out more than the other. Um, this month being October, we have a few awarenesses, breast cancer awareness. Um, we have, what was the child? Infant and Pregnancy Loss Awareness Month. And then we have domestic violence. And then we also have Down syndrome. Of course, there's a lot of other ones too, but those are just a few that I'm going to talk about. But today we're going to talk about Down syndrome. And today, um, my guest, Michelle Letterly, will be talking to us about a couple of different things because she's expecting. <laughs> little one. And then um, she has another one that's in the studio here. Um, what was her name? Brindley. 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 Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a mom of, well, about to be three, so I have two girls. I have a daughter who would be five who had Down syndrome, and then I have a three-year-old daughter who um, has autism as well. I'm also a former special ed teacher, so I'm very well-versed. Yeah, so oh, very right. well-versed in the, the world of disabilities, and it's kind of been a passion of mine since I was a kiddo. I used to volunteer with the with kids with special needs all the time, so, um, and then um, after I had my my second daughter, I left teaching to be able to focus on her more. So, And by having met her, she has a lot that's <laughs> needed. She's very mm -hmm. energetic. Fiery redhead with lots of energy, yes. I love it. I love it. Do you have a name for your baby that's coming? The, our little boy is Riker. Riker. That's Riker. an interesting name. Yeah. Okay. So. Everyone's got a name, and there's a reasoning behind it, I'm sure. It was the boy name we picked out uh, back when we were pregnant with um, Mackenzie, and oh, okay. we were just kind of held on to the boy name. So then and we we'll, had a boy. So and and now you are. And so we're now we're boy. actually going to talk about Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even going to have to say or ask the question what life changing um, thing happened to you. So please tell me about Mackenzie and um, your journey with having the pregnancy and and her having Down syndrome. Sure. You said yes. Okay. Uh, so Mackenzie, gosh, wow, she was a a big surprise, a blessing. Uh, didn't think I could have kiddos and got pregnant uh, by surprise, so which was great. Don't we um, all know where those babies come from? <laughs> I do know how that works, <laughs> but with all the medical conditions, they, they just said that wasn't going to be a thing. Oh, so okay. uh, it was a bit, very big surprise. Okay. So, um, But we were very excited, um, had a lot of uh, trouble, though, through the pregnancy, not, not realizing how hard it would be. And um, at 28 weeks, which is the start of your third trimester, they admitted me into the hospital. I had already been on bed rest for a few weeks at home. Oh, wow. um, and they admitted me and said, well, uh, we're going to keep you in the hospital until you deliver. And I said, wait a second. That's a lot that's, of weeks. That's 12 weeks. And I said, mm -hmm. no. I don't like that idea. Can I go home? And they said, I said, no, absolutely not. So uh, their goal was to keep her in for another seven weeks. Uh, but she decided five days was enough. So five days, that's good. <laughs> so uh, that day, uh, so I went in uh, to the hospital the Thursday night. Friday, they said they were going to keep me for forever, you know. Um, and then she came on Tuesday, and it was a bit of a roller coaster of, you can get out of bed. No, you can't get out of bed. You know, back and forth. And then it was, okay, we're going to prep you for emergency C-section. And you're like, oh, her heart rate uh, for a baby, normally you're looking at 140s and above for a normal heart rate of a, a, in, in utero. And her heart rate kept dropping to the 60s. Wow. So, and it wasn't recovering. So, um, they were worried that maybe the cord was wrapped or there was a knot in the cord or they couldn't figure out why she was having so much trouble. So uh, she was born a few hours later at a whopping one pound, 12 ounces. Oh, so tiny. that's considered a micro preemie. So um, she literally fit into the palm of my hands. Um, so wow. even though she was a 28 weeker, she was measuring at the, uh, what a 25 weeker would, would be. Okay. So, um, so she was born literally three months early. Wow. Um, but she came out screaming. She was strong. <laughs> she has a redhead too, so I think that helps. Um, hmm. Very fiery. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, had it came out screaming. We thought she had good lungs, and you know, she didn't have to go on to normally uh, a baby that young. They'd have to intubate and put you know a tube down their throat. Sure. Um, but actually, she just had to go on uh, room air, oxygen, like you would like if you were having trouble breathing right now. They would just put you know a little cannula. Mm -hmm. So uh, something like that's just a little bit stronger force. Sure. Um, 
And I will tell you, so I had trouble with, with the emergency C-section and went into um, uh, hypothermia. So um, even though she was born at six, about a couple minutes before 6 p.m., I didn't see her. They finally let me, after I recovered from the hypothermia, about 1.30 in the morning, I got to peek at her real quick. Oh. And then they took me to my room. So I saw her the next morning, and I will tell you, the second that I saw her, I knew instantly she had Down syndrome. So you had no idea no prior idea. to that? Her tests that, that they do in utero had all been fine, and they were good, um, no, no issues, but at... Um, I just knew instantly in my gut. I think, you know, mom gut. Mom intuition. Mom, mom gut is definitely. a thing, man. Um, so uh, I knew instantly she had Down syndrome and they told me no. They told you no? They told me no. So, so how did you know? Mom's just no, but she kept doing a tongue thrusting. So I, I just, I don't know. Interesting. Some, something speaks to you and says, hey, fight for your kid, right? Of course, at so, any age. Right, uh, right. Um, my son's 24 and I still fight for him. Sure. Not, or am I fighting with him? No, that's never no, the No, you're case. fighting for him. I'm yes. for him. I'm so always you're always for him. mama bear, right? I will always be mama bear. Um, so, um, so when you thought that and they told you no, mm -hmm. what, what, what was going through your head? Because that's, um, I spoke with someone the other day from a foundation here and some of the um, programs that they have mm -hmm. deal with moms that um, there's a grievance. There's a grievance sure. because you think there's a, a normal, as we want to call normal, I think the normal right. has our changed. Our vision, our projection of what that yeah. child's life is supposed to be. Yeah. And it, what, for me, it wasn't so much that. It was just the fact that nobody had listened to me. It took, them, it took me eight weeks to convince the doctors to test her. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. So eight, eight That's weeks. a lot of weeks. And then, you know, of course, they run the blood work because it's a chunk of blood so that sure. they were worried about having to give her a transfusion so i understand why they wanted to wait but trying to convince them they kept telling me no we're 99 sure she doesn't have it and i said no i'm 100 percent sure you're wrong so but they did the blood work and um so with with down syndrome it's really known as trisomy 21 which means you have an uh, extra duplication of the 21st chromosome okay. um so meaning that's what came back on her genetic testing that they did so um so then the only reason that that's such a big deal is because it changes the course of the treatment while they're in the hospital and for the rest of their life because um, then generally associated with Down syndrome, um, there's usually a heart condition, mm. would hence the reason she kept having heart issues in the womb. Um, and then there's usually lung issues as well. So they have a lot of trouble breathing, okay. um, weak lungs, and she did have chronic lung, what they consider chronic lung disease. Okay. So um, she would have had to come home on oxygen and oh. um, you know that would have been a real thing. So just knowing if you know ahead of time with Down syndrome, then that's they automatically go into that course of, we need to check heart, lungs, et cetera, and make sure, sure you know, then they need to have, uh, see a developmental pediatrician. Um, they usually have a lot of trouble with feeding, so they might need to see a feeding therapist. They probably need to have some occupational therapy. They definitely need some type of speech therapy. So there's just a whole gamut of uh, things that are to come. Now you learned of these things after the fact, I'm assuming, or, or because you had special ed? A little bit, like I knew it was common for them to have a heart issue mm -hmm. and generally like speech or OT, but I didn't realize like from day one they would need it. Okay, okay. Um, because I was in the school setting, obviously I knew like, oh yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're three, they'll probably need it, they'll you know, start at a young age. But I also didn't realize how extensive the heart issues could be or the lung issues, and then there's other other medical conditions, she had what they call Hirschsprungs, which is usually only associated with Down syndrome, and it has to do with um, like the GI tract and the bowels, and so that would have required another surgery and things like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was talking to a gal from another organization um, here, um, actually in, in Tempe, okay. Arizona. Um, the organization is called DS Network, and they have different programs, and when she was sharing with me, um, one of the mothers, she was talking about how she was scared. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that um, she grieved because her life was not going to be the same, and she went through all these different mm -hmm. things. And I, and I mind you, I didn't get to talk to her very long, but when she said she was scared, I'm like, what are you scared of? And then mm -hmm. she shared with me, like you just said, right. all the different normalities sure. we are used to are not going to be that for not just that <coughs> child, but for you and your right. family to move you know, forward and thinking, I'm going to have to take care of this child for the rest of my life. Right. And okay. then just the struggles that come along with it. I mean, she was only 10 weeks, you know, she got diagnosed at eight weeks, you know, and I, my worry is, oh my gosh, what if she never gets invited to a birthday party? 
And that mom said the same and, thing. And my boyfriend's like, she's two months old. Why are we worried about birthing? I'm like, I don't know. Because we're Because projecting. I'm a teacher and yes. I know kids can be mean. Well, because they leave that's kids different. Out and, yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. like. Will, will she have friends? Will she get to do sleepovers? And, you know, will she get asked to a dance? And, you know, the, yeah, those things. So that you start to panic. The and way worry. society has molded how we think everything should, should be. be. Right? Yes, okay. exactly. So we learned real quick that she she did things her way and in her time and in her manner. And she I was do the that boss. at my age. Are you kidding me? So uh, <laughs> we learned that real fast that she was kind of the exception to the rule Absolutely. when it came to life. And she was going to tell us how it was going to be. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so now I understand she did pass away. She did. So she lived for 85 days of life um, outside of the womb. Um, shortly after she was dying, we got the full diagnosis. Um, uh, the next week she became ill with a cold and was moved into isolation. And that cold just progressed and got worse and moved to pneumonia. Um, so after 75 days at the hospital she had been born at, um, we had to be airlifted to another hospital um, to be put on special life support, which is called ECMO. Um, and it's very intensive. It's a heart and lung bypass. So machines are basically being her body. They have to sew um, tubes into her neck. Wow. Um, and it's very, it's very risky. It's too. very traumatic. It's very risky because they don't know, especially on a child that young and that small, they don't have any data of the survival rates. Um, or what the side effects are. So it's kind of a, the, the blood is being rerouted from the brain. So we're hoping that the body creates a new way for the blood to get to the brain. So sure. you don't know if they will be brain dead. Did you get to hold her in any of this time? No. Once so they're on ECMO, you can't touch them. So we then literally can do petting kind of mm -hmm. motion. It has to be silent. You want them to, you want the room to be quiet, calm. calm. Okay. calm. Um, which is crazy because there's constantly at least five people in the room to take, just to care for her on, yeah. a, on a regular basis. So okay. we, she always had two nurses. She always had two two nurses that ran just the ECMO machine, and then she had her own respiratory tech at all times because she was so fragile. As a bereaved mom, also not in the same conditions. Mine was an auto accident in 2007. Um, my daughter was ejected from the vehicle that we were in, and she passed away. But I had to go through the hospital part of it because mm -hmm. I won't get in detail. But all those different things you're saying, don't do this, don't do that. Um, the one thing that I wasn't able to do was to actually just give her a hug. Yep. And so that's a grievance in itself. Right. Um, do you hold that Hold that on? You know what's really hard for me is that, I mean, we got to hold her as she passed when we had to decide to take her off life support because it just was getting unbearable for her and there was no no way for her to recover. Okay. Um, what kills me is, and people don't realize how important pictures are. They're very important. I take them um, all the time. So literally the only family pictures we have of oh. her and me and her father together are of the ones of her passing. So we don't ever have in those other 84 days a picture of her and not, you know, all three of us together holding her. Because before she got sick, we could hold her and pick her up. We, you know, we had given her a couple baths here and there, but. It was, I gave her the bath and he took a picture, or, you know, he was holding her and I took the picture, or the nurse took the picture, Separate which is great pictures. that I'm glad we have those pictures, because sure. I have about a hundred or so pictures of her, or us, you know, in that scenario, but, um, but none of us in a as happy a moment mm -hmm. as a family, so... That's the only thing I regret, so I tell people all the time, take pictures. I'm all about that. And pictures. then you get really devastated when your computer crashes and you lose every single picture and you have to pay $800 to have it recovered to find the pictures that Not you to have. mention that technology is constantly changing yes. and you're trying to figure so out how to keep up. Back up your stuff. Back up your stuff and take <laughs> lots of pictures. Print them. I do and put them in the fireproof box. I actually right? do print pictures. People are like, why so. do you do that? You can leave them on your phone. Do you know how many people have cracked their phones, lost their phones, stolen their phones? Right. There's so Drops many different water, things. Yeah. Pictures, they're, they're, pictures capture a memory in time. Well, at some point, ever. it might be the only thing you have. I, I, so, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. So to me, getting family photos, you know, paying a couple hundred bucks for family photos. Was worth it. It's no big deal. Completely yeah. understood. Thankfully for that that scenario, um, the gal volunteered her time. So it was, it was very nice of her to come that in um, to the hospital and, and document that for so us. So those are the pictures I had seen when you had recently posted what was the other um, awareness for this month was in. So on the 15th of this month of October is um, 
Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness uh, Day. So that is the day that they honor all the babies that left us too soon. So whether they were in, in utero or stillborn or um, you know died at a very young age, um, and there's a special thing that you do for on that day, and we call it a wave of light. Yeah. Um, and every time zone, you um, light a candle at 7 p.m. for all the babies that are, have left us too soon. So as one time zone is ending, a new time Again. zone is starting. So you do it from 7 to 8. Okay. Um, and so it literally becomes a wave of light around the world. I love that. Yeah, so it's really nice. That. So And you wear pink and blue to represent the babies. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody has their own memory. So for, for me, um, that day is extremely important because that's the day she passed away. So I remember you telling me that. So it has a double meaning. Double meaning. meaning. So, Absolutely double so, meaning. Yeah. So October 15th is, is our day to, to remember celebrate. her and honor her. Mm -hmm. And we usually try to go do some kind of random acts of kindness to celebrate her or um, do something in her memory, either releasing butterflies or going to the butterfly garden or, um, you know, donating books somewhere. Um, she would be five this year. So, um, you know, maybe donating to a school. Say her you know, name. Her. Mackenzie. I'm, Mackenzie Marie. Mackenzie Marie. Yeah. So. I'm an, I am a stickler when it comes to uh, names, so thank yes. you. Now, moving forward, we have a little one running around here in the <laughs> studio. and She's she, having a good old time. She is. I'm surprised she hasn't come up here yet to I come know. sit on your lap She's or figure out what we're chairs. doing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about her. Uh, so, uh, Brinley is what we call our rainbow baby. So, oh. the, when, when you have a, a child after a loss, that's called. So, Mackenzie's my angel baby, and then Brinley is my rainbow baby, okay. and Riker will be my pot of gold baby. So, that's what their terminology is. So, where's your are. leprechaun? Yes. <laughs> right? That would be my significant <laughs> other. We call him the leprechaun. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Mr. Leprechaun. His, uh, my nieces call him a leprechaun. <laughs> oh, they so, do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, so they say, uh, you know, a rainbow come after every storm comes a rainbow. So that's why a baby um, that you have after a loss is considered your rainbow baby. Oh, so to bring back yeah. the, the brightness the to your brightness. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so they are almost exactly two years apart to the day. So oh. their birthdays are just a few days apart, um, both wild July babies, so not Leos, they're cancers, but thank goodness they're not <laughs> Leos because I don't know if I could handle it. Um, but uh, she also um, has autism, so um, she is nonverbal, so she doesn't speak. She actually uses an iPad to communicate and talk okay. and share her thoughts and needs. And um, uh, she uh, also Brindley. has... Brindley. Brindley, come here. Brindley. Oh, no. Brindley. Brindley. <laughs> Come here, Brindley. Um, she also has sensory <laughs> processing disorder um, and a significant feeding delay. So we still have all the joys of all the therapies that we would have done with her sister, um, but uh, a little bit different style. So a little more intensive when it comes to the speech part of things. So she's very energetic. She's a ping pong. We call her ping pong ball. She is nonstop. Here she comes. Come say hi, honey. Hello. You want to say hi? Come here. Come here. Come say hi. So one of my fiery redheads. And there she Woo! is. Hello. Yep, so um, autism is, is, is a, you know, a very well-known disability that um, I think a lot of people are not very aware of, though, of how in-depth it can be. There are different levels. Bye -bye. Um, so um, uh, a level one means they need just a little bit of, of therapy or in, in, in help, and level two would be um, needing more, and then three is very intensive. So when she's a level three, meaning she needs a lot of support in various areas, so like in five different categories. So my sister, I actually have two nephews, one by adoption mm -hmm. and one by blood. Oh, They're both okay. autistic, and they are the total opposite. Completely, yeah. mm -hmm. completely. That's, that's why it's called a spectrum, because it literally can be it is from my, one yeah. end to the other. My one nephew, so. I want to say he's. 10 or 11 and the other one's 17. Oh, okay. And my 17 year old uh, nephew was on uh, an event that I just had on Sunday. And um, yeah, it was a different side. He was yes. actually very quiet when normally he's the one that's running oh, around doing things. Oh, interesting, okay. I think there were so many different things going on um, that were you know, keeping his attention um, mm -hmm. to not where he had to sit there and try to keep himself gotcha. busy. Mm -hmm. But we were on a moving boat, you know. So. Yeah, she's water obsessed. So uh, <laughs> if we would have taken her, she probably would have been in the water. So sure. oh. like legit, we okay. haven't really taken her on a boat for that reason. Okay. We have taken her on some boats like on the lake, but if, if you know, the steamboat goes a little bit the slower, she would have been yeah. like, oh, cool, I can totally jump off of this as it moves. She would have loved to see so. the, uh, 
the long hair, uh, long horned sheep that were out there. Um, oh, probably. Beautiful day. She beautiful does like day. animals, so <laughs> she's a wild one. <laughs> she's a kid. It's okay. We love it. We but. love it. So, um, with having had a, a child with Down syndrome, mm -hmm. and then you also have Brinley with autism. Is there anything that you are aware of with your son? Nope, so we've done all the genetic testing that you can possibly do okay. while you're pregnant. Um, and at this point, everything is good. Um, so that rules out any kind of chromosomal um, issue. But um, with autism, that's something that's not diagnosed until they're usually, <coughs> some people as early as um, you know nine months, a year. That's generally because they have a sibling that has it. Brindley. Good save. Um, <laughs> Come here. Hey, come here. Makes for an exciting <laughs> set. I don't want. Brinley, um, come here. Autism can't be diagnosed until usually later, usually till they're, most is till they're two, three, four, or five. Using their the, motor skills and mm -hmm. everything else, then they yeah. know when they're. they're Having so. a speech delay, okay. uh, maybe feeding delays, okay. or. Um, walking um, late, sitting late, okay. you know, having those, not hitting those developmental milestones. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I love kids. <laughs> hey, Kaboom, Mom. I'm like, if you could see her right now. And that's okay. And I didn't want to change it because this is, this is the real, our lives are not to be edited. So if right. we were to stop, then that means we're not accepting the behaviors of, or the actions, or a feeling of emotions, whatever the case may be. So no, and this, this is, is great. With her this always. is real. <laughs> I've been told I'm a handful and I am um, high energy, but I think I'm at my match. <laughs> I have become the master of having conversations Hi, while still chasing a toddler around and, and you're gonna have keeping quite, her from destroying a room. You're so. going to have quite a bit going on once your son is born I, then, yep, too. He's probably going to be strapped to me while I chase this one. <laughs> so is, what I, is, okay. is the goal right now, is the plan at least. So, so we'll wrap this up real quick yeah. so that she can get um, out there because she's wondering what's outside that yeah, window. Yeah, she, she loves outside. Side, I so. do too. I do too. Um, so one question I like to ask everybody is, what legacy do you want to leave? So I want to, I am part of a, <laughs> a foundation that does help um, um, families who are bereaved. What is so that? it's called Tears Foundation. So okay. it's very specific to infant and pregnancy loss. So meaning kids under a year, okay. um, helping with funeral costs or cremation costs. Um, and then we offer a lot of... Um, uh, support in the fact that we have uh, some grief supports and then we now have what we call a community partner so meaning um, when you're when your child passes away you're not expecting your 85 she lived 12 weeks one day I wasn't expecting a 12 week old baby to pass away how do you plan a funeral for a 12 week old actually my daughter was 17 I don't think you can do that even at that age right you're not thinking about the financial on um, that financial, part of it but like do they make, emotionally? Do they make coffins that small? Like you know what I mean? Oh, like, you're I didn't just think like, about where that. Where do you go? And literally, one of the places we went to, it looked like an ice chest, and I'm like, I'm not burying my kid in this thing. Oh. Um, so we have a community partner that will meet you at the funeral home, and kind of be your voice okay. and ask the questions that need to be asked okay. that you're probably not thinking about because, sure. well, you don't have a brain at that point. Your brain doesn't work. So um, that person is there to just kind of be an advocate for the family um, to help in assist in the process to make sure their their needs and that? stuff are taken care of, um, but while they're still going through the grieving process. So I really liked that idea. And then I'm working to eventually create a foundation in her honor um, to help families with autism because when your child gets diagnosed, it is mind shattering, world shattering, and um, it, t it takes a good six months to kind of figure out a little bit of a rhythm okay. of how, what services do they need? How, how do I find these services? Um, how do I function? How do I get a schedule together? How do I get them from point A to point B? How do I still work? Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to be able to create a foundation in her honor that um, provides like scholarships to families so that they can for an aid for all well, of those. so that they can take some time off from work and be able to focus on their kid sure. and, and and not lose their house. <laughs> Yeah, or, and, or their mind. Or, or their mind <laughs> so that they can figure out how to put together a good plan um, for their their child to get them on the right track okay. and then um, and not have to, you know, worry about okay. losing their their job as well. So 
You have your hands I do. Full My kid is climbing sure. on all the furniture right now. Um, she, if you're worried about her falling, she won't fall. So she literally is uh, the master of climbing. So. so, well, today was definitely an adventure with Miss Friendly in here. <laughs> and like I said, I didn't. I don't want to edit anything because this is the life. This yep, is where this if there's anyone out there that life. has a child that has a monkey um, type. Literally personality <laughs> this is what you're in for if you don't know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there any last things you want to share say um, um, you know just I encourage people to really you know get to know people who have kids with disabilities or who have gone through loss um, you know there's such two major journeys and they need support agreed they need understanding um, you know there are so many people in my life that ha there are quite a few that have been great during um, the. My heart <laughs> just jumped out of my chest. I think. She took over the chair. Um, and see me, I don't know. The unedited finish. version. Um, um, you know, I, those I have I have a small group of people that have been great and supportive um, okay. during the loss of my child. Okay. But now that we're five years out, sure. it's not the same because sure. it's they don't have memories. Um, so just trying to be a constant. Um, and, you know, that is truly life changing when you've lost a child um, and you, you, you know, end up losing ties with certain people. You do. Um, and then when you have a child with a disability, um, you lose ties also. Really? Yeah. Wow. People don't understand your child and are not accepting of Being your different. kiddo and that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to do things differently. We don't do, we don't do life normal. <laughs> I see that, but I love it. I love it. So. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your family with thank me you. and all of the information that uh, can be for other people. Um, you are very welcome to reach me at the address that will be provided. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Almighty, child. <laughs> if only y'all could see. Brittany, <laughs> Brittany, she's giving me a heart attack. <laughs> this is the real deal. This is our lives, right? Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to reach out to me at uh, Stories of Hope dot my journey at gmail.com and thank you again for coming you're welcome thank you so much for having me i really appreciate yes, it i appreciate it take care you guys the preceding program was brought to you by the holy spirit broadcasting network hsbn television